The Crypt Interviews, in association with Mayo Leisure Point Castle Bar. You're listening to The Crypt, and my special guests today on the show are indie filmmakers Damon Ricard and Alex Matheson. So you're very welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for having me. Well, firstly, could you tell us about your journey into filmmaking? And we'll start off with Damon. The way I got into it was was mostly as well. It was through through Alex. We've been we've been friends for twenty years now. We used to we we got to know each other from working in a video shop. That's I mean that that really does show how long our friendship's been there. Um, and we've talked for a long time about doing something together like that. You know, some sort of uh, film and. Um, we had a script that was written and it sort of gestated for a little while. I think it was about a year. Not Didn't really do too much with it. And then I sort of forced us into it by um, going ahead and hiring a couple of actresses from America, booking their plane tickets and basically going around going, we're doing this, you know. And uh, But thankfully, you know, I, I was completely green to everything. Uh, so it was great to have Alex, who, who had experience and stuff, to to essentially teach me on the job. Well, what experience did you have then, Alex? So um, I work in television uh, as a promo director, so I make adverts for TV shows. And that started off with editing um, and then moved on to sort of uh, small shoots and things like that. So I've got some some, uh, studio experience and I've got some uh, shooting experience. I'd never done anything like a film before. Um, I make 30 second adverts where, you know, you, you, you sort of cut something together and it's for you know, selling a product and all that sort of thing. And obviously the aim for me was always to try and do films and do the things we loved. And uh, <laughs> basically, as Damon said, uh, he basically uh, gave us, we'd written the script, which we quite liked, and it sort of sat there for a little while. And then suddenly he goes, in five weeks, we're shooting a film. These two actresses have agreed to do it. And suddenly we were on a roller coaster ride, which probably changed both our lives in some ways, you know. Well, Definitely that... the, our passion for film. But, um, yeah, so we started cracking on with the tour. That is just amazing to think that that was your first film. It was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. So for those who haven't seen it, can you just give listeners a synopsis of the plot? Basically, uh, we we sort of had this idea. We wanted to do a, a haunted house film, but we wanted to have a, a different sort of take on it. Uh, so the idea is these two uh, American tourists uh, sort of come over to the UK to visit the, uh, the UK's most haunted house. And they're taken in uh, by a tour guide who has maybe ulterior motive. And uh, they enter the house and then all hell breaks loose, essentially. It's a really nice, short tidy idea with a nice few twists and fun parts to it and I think as soon as we got uh, our two actresses Heather and Jessica on board um, it just gave us so much more uh, credence and stuff with the horror audience as well which is something Damon has such good foresight with. Well then of course Heather and Jessica are very well known in the independent horror scene so how did you get those two on board? Um, I had sort of been talking to Jessica for a little while just nothing related to it just just generally and um i had a at the time i had a a little film review website and i asked her if she'd do an interview which she said yes and in between the time of actually doing the interview and having asked her we had this script um and on twitter i sort of adjured her and promised her lots of alcohol Uh, (laughs) i'm sure she loved that yeah (laughs) Um, um, to come over and do it and uh, sent it to her she said yes Um, she then for the other person uh, put Heather forward Um, I saw a couple of things that uh, some some uh, reels for Heather and there was just wasn't necessarily for the greatest films but I saw something in her that was definitely in our character so it was it was almost a no-brainer and then the fact that the two of those are best friends in real life that chemistry comes across on screen Yes. Well, then, can we talk a little bit about the location? This came about because of, uh, about four or five years previously, um, I went on a, a ghost hunt with, a, with an old school friend who I'd, who I'd randomly connected back up with. Um, and she was in this group that went off and did paranormal stuff. And she invited me along to this go hunt, ghost hunt at Wimmering Manor in Portsmouth. It's uh, the oldest building there. You can tell that everything's been built up around it. 
and then we did vigils and things it's a creepy old house now when we were trying to find a location for this one we were you know looking 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 quite, couldn't quite find the right things and then it just suddenly went oh hang on in my mind i've got this this place that i've been to and i know you can get access to so i just emailed the people that were restoring it and said can we film there and they said uh yeah if you want to put in a, a small donation to the to the restoration fund and it literally was a small donation to the restoration fund so essentially we we pretty much got the got the house for free to use fantastic and you know what I, I do a segment on the show every month called haunted history and we actually done a segment on wimmering manor ah so you know the house yeah that was cool so it was um and then of course the score so atmospheric who composed that uh, that was my cousin eric elick when he composed it, did you know that was it straight away or did you have to try a few different ones out? I think, because um, obviously I had a lot of, um, I've got a few contacts with new scoring in, from my side of things. And when Damon sort of suggested Eric, because I think Eric hadn't done a score before, but he was very keen to get involved in that. So when um, he sent us the first things, there were three or four tracks, but I remember the, the, uh, the main theme which he'd sent us for the tour. And we both fell in love with that one piece of music really, really quickly. As soon as, as soon as we heard that one piece, then everything sort of flowed from that one piece. And we said, that's the one, that is the, that is the exact piece of music we're after. So, I mean, he's sensational. And we were, what a find. But we were so happy with uh, the work he did. I think he transformed the film. And like anybody who wants to see the tour, where is that available? Um, well, I'm working on... I'm, I'm going to be getting it up online in one way or another shortly i'm not exactly sure when but it will be it will be coming up we've got all the uh, the perks out to people so mm-hmm. people have got their dvds and stuff um yeah so i'm trying to figure out the best uh avenue to putting it online whether it be just sticking it up on vimeo or youtube and showing the link or trying to get something like uh their batteries fair house or uh, i'm currently trying to uh, talking to well not talking to i have contacted crypt tv i'm just waiting to hear back but uh, they may not take it it may not be quite up their street who knows oh well i can't see why not i thought it was a fantastic short it really was and then moving on then to another 15 minute short you done the package that was written and directed by you damon it was yes very yeah. much a tarantino feel for it absolutely love this one too can you give listeners a quick overview of the story of that one well, uh, this is a story where you're dropped in the middle of this situation between two uh, mysterious colleagues. Uh, one of them's tied to a chair. The other one uh, is interrogating him. You don't know why, you don't know what for, and uh, slowly build up, the tension builds up between them to a point of sort of how far is this guy willing to go to, to get what he wants from his from his colleague. Um, and the answer's quite far. So... Uh, yeah, I don't want to give too much on it because it's it's about the character play between them more than the what happens at the end and all of that. So, well, you had said before that the package was born through the idea that as a society we're quick to judge a situation slowly from what yeah. we see, and yes, you, t- you take the... sides, and you do, you do, you take sides straight away because you think you know who's in the right and who's in the wrong kind of thing. It's it's very very interesting how you've done that. Yeah. I mean, it was literally, I was, it's just something I remember from when I was um, standing out in the street coming, it was, um, I was actually coming home from work one, one day and I saw this fight and uh, it was quite, quite a brutal fight. This guy was on the floor, another guy standing over him with one of those where you have sometimes a car park with a chain in front of it, just hang, hanging a bit low. He had just taken yeah. this chain up and wrapped it around this guy's neck and I was like, oh my God, what do I do? And I was just about to call the police because it, I thought this, and um, but then it all got broken up, and eventually they managed to go their separate ways. And immediately, my my opinion went to the guy that had the chain wrapped around the other guy's throat was the what all of that sort of stuff. But then it's sort of something that's that's always sat with me. So you know, yeah. personally, I'm not a violent person. I like violent films, but seeing it in real life is not something which is why one of the reasons i like horror because it's it's, it's that escapism to you can see the horrors of real life without actually having to see the horrors of real life um and yeah so sort of but then i thought what if the guy that was on the floor with the chain around his neck had done something so horrific to uh, to this a member of this guy's family was it was what the was what what i guy the guy that i thought was the aggressor was what he did 
warranted in that case. You know, it's sort of, uh, I didn't know. So I wanted to put people into that situation with my characters. And you certainly do. And there's some very cringeworthy uh, torture scenes in it, I have to say. <laughs> my nails, I never look at them the same way again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And then once again, an excellent cast. Obviously, you had only two characters in this, so it was very important that these guys nailed it. You cast Tom Gordon, who yeah. was in the tour, and also Dan Palmer. So can you talk about casting these two guys? Did you know straight away that was who oh, you wanted? Or yeah. had you quite... I, mean, I actually wrote it with those two in mind. Um, Tom, Tom was on board from quite early on, uh, and Dan not too long. I wanted to do something with Dan, um, I loved him installed, and you know I thought that that there's a guy here that's known for his comedic acting, and um, you know he he the way he put it on a on a recent interview, he said uh, people might be a bit surprised with it because I don't have my trousers down around my ankles. Mm -hmm. um, so you know he's obviously he's he's obviously felt that he's got that reputation for the for the for the humorous side, and I thought it'd be perfect to put him in a straight role. So you sort of people that know him will see him and go, well, he's going to be the funny uh, kooky character, yeah. but he's not. So you have a, a premeditated thought on what he's going to be like. And Tom um, is one of the loveliest guys you will ever meet. So I wanted to have somebody again, which you would look at. And he's in a situation where you immediately think he is an aggressor. Yeah. But he's got such a way of playing it that he really can pull the audience on his side if they want to go with him. Tom, Tom from after the tour, I just literally want to do everything with Tom. We both worked with him since since the tour and the package. We both worked with him again. But see, that's it. You definitely you will be like Tarantino then with the same the same gang. Yeah, <laughs> all the movies. Yeah. He can be your Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or my, he's my De Niro to Scorsese. Although I'm not Scorsese, so. <laughs> A bold statement there, Damon. Uh, yeah, he's the De Niro. I'm the, the Scorsese uh, wannabe. Well, I tell you, as I said in my reviews, if this is what you guys can do in 15 minutes, I cannot wait until you have your first feature length because they are, were fantastic shorts. Is this one available yet or are you working on that too with the package? Um, that one will be available soon again. Um, I'm just waiting for the perks to go out. Uh, Dan needs to send me some stuff back and then I can post them. So as soon as that's done, uh, the package will be going up online too. So hopefully these will both be out online in the next couple of months. Excellent. And are there Facebook pages that people can follow? Both there projects? certainly are. I um, couldn't tell you what they are off the top of my head. Um, but if you, if you look for the tall movie on Facebook and... Pretty sure it's the package movie on Facebook. Um, might have a year after them. I can never remember the links. I'll find them and I'll stick them up on the Crips page. I'm sure. Okay, like lovely. Them. And there's sure like them. Of them. And then, Jamin, I seen on your Facebook that you recently decided to test yourself and make three shorts in two days. So can you tell <laughs> us a bit about that? Yes. I mean, it's, it's sort of it came from a few things that made me want to want to do this. Um, Alex set himself up to do to do a new short, uh, which he, he filmed recently. And I was there just sort of filming a bit behind the scenes and things. And it just made me go, God, I want to, I want to get another one done. I was, I was missing it and yeah. saw him directing away and was just getting really, really jealous. And so I also, as a feature that I've, that I've written, I want to be able to film in a very cheap way um, because obviously fundraising is very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to test to see if I could do, uh, how much I could do in, in basically in two days with a very small kit and a very small crew. I mean, we had a crew of about it was six people, I think, in total, including you know uh, somebody doing running for us and stuff. So, and the kit was really limited. It was a few small lights which I'd bought. We had some um, handheld sound equipment as well as some decent. You know, we did have some decent microphones because we knew that without good sound. You know, there's there's no point in making something look as beautiful as you can if it doesn't sound any good. Um, but yeah, so it was a test to see if I could pull this off, and if I could, then it sort of made me think perhaps I could use that whole filmmaking style to go off and um, to go off and do my feature that I want to do. Excellent. Will we get to see those? Yes, you will. Um, one, maybe two of them are going to go forward to festivals, so we'll have to see what happens first there. But at least one will be coming up online. 
almost with it again within the next couple of months. Very soon, it just be there'll be just my name everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And then Alex, for anybody yes. know anyone now who'll be sitting at home listening to this interview, and you know they want to be a filmmaker, they want to get started and do their first short. What advice would you give them on how how to get started? Do you know? I think what was funny is that I, I had this experience in television, but I needed a friend like Damon to actually do it. Someone just to throw me under the bus almost and go, "We're making this, and you have to deal with it." And I think it was such a huge help to me because you have. You have that fear of failure thing where you sort of, I mean, I've written a lot of things um, and we'd written some, I've written a, like a beginning of a TV series and some other things, some half films we'd written and some other shorts I'd written and it took a good friend and, you know, with, with the same passion and drive to go, you can do this, let's do it together. And I think that's why um, I've just been recently making another film, uh, but the tour was probably a more fun experience because it was with, with one of my be- best friends. And I think it's surrounding yourself with passionate people is first and foremost, the thing you need yeah. people who care about what they're doing, people who love the same sort of things and share that creative passion. If you can do that and find those people, then these things start to make themselves. They really do. And um, I think that's what I would, I would always advise and don't overthink things. I think I've, I've always been a, uh, sucker in the past for trying to sort of control too much. The sort of the imperfections of that movie seems to be everyone's yeah. favourite things about it, rather than the things that I, I feel are like the best bits in it. They're not the bits people talk about. The bits people talk about are the, you know, we lost footage, we shot till four in the morning. The adventure of making that film was just the most fun I think either of us have ever had. You know, and I'd been doing TV for like ten years before then, so. You know, it's about getting up and doing it, writing it, trying it, experimenting and just and just doing it. You know, that's it. You just got to do it. For me, nothing else beyond that would have existed if it wasn't for Alex. You know, if I'd have gone off to do the tour on my own, I would have probably fallen flat on my face. I ended up with crew that I used for the package from the tour, which which is where you know, it all came from Alex's contacts and everything. And it was just basically the way my life is now. And the, the fact that I've doing it, and the, these two short films in three days um, wouldn't exist if it hadn't been for Alex. And I owe him so much for that. And what for you, eternally grateful. You know. Oh, that's um, so lovely. You're going to get me teary-eyed here listening. Oh, to you. <laughs> <laughs> that is so nice. And I think, yeah, I've just come off. I've just I've been shooting a new film called The Jitter Man, and I'm sort of in post production with that at the moment. And already I'm thinking, when can I do my next film with Damo if I can, you know, because that was, it was more fun. It's just so fun to have somebody to support you there all the way through it, you know. A few weeks back, I had Irish filmmaker Paddy Murphy on the show and he said the exact hey, same thing. Paddy. Paddy is so sound. He said his crew, they're like a family and that's what makes it for them. It's so true. It is. And I think one of the, one of the most important lessons I've learned is... I actually put a post up on Facebook about this recently is in terms of making the film, we, you might have the idea, you may have the vision, you may write it, but on set, you as the director, you're not the talent. Everybody is that every single little cog in that big wheel of making that film is absolutely vital. It's almost like synchronized swimming. If you have one person not doing it right, the synchronization looks, looks rubbish. So if you, if you've got the right people working for you and you treat them right and you treat them with respect and they want to work with you again, then, you know, it does create a family feel on set. And all the ones that I've had have been that family feel. I mean, the tour was just because everybody was just so awesome. It was just, it was just utter fun, hard work, exhausting, but so much fun. Yeah. I think, I think at the level and budget we were making these films, I mean, the amount of favors we pulled in for these films um, you have to allow your team to experiment and get what they need out of it as well, yeah. as much as possible. We're all learning together. And, you know, in the promo world, the world I come from, you hire the people you know who can do the job well. But in this thing, it's like you're giving everyone a chance to learn and grow together. And so the adventure is so much better in that sense because you're just like you're putting your faith in everyone, you know. Mm-hmm. And we share the failures and we share the successes. And I think that's, that's the crucial part of it. And then the other thing I want to ask you about is the film festival circuit. How do you go about getting your projects into all the different festivals? Oh, that's a question. Um, submission. <laughs> Lots of submissions. 
That's that's you've got to be hard nosed about it, but haven't you, Damo? You I have. think you've got to expect rejection, and I think you've got to you know, and just got to be broad about it and be open minded. And I think you, from speaking to you, Damon's taken most of this stuff on. It's been very much um, the broader we've played it, and some really unexpected places have taken things and really taken it to their hearts. And then you've had some other times where you've gone, oh, it's a shame we didn't get in there, but it's not the be all and end all. Sharing it and getting it out there, and these things get momentum, I think. And also, I have to say, obviously, with the tour, uh, the experience on that, um, having Jessica and Heather in that film just gave it a little bit more traction than I even expected, I think. Jessica is a social media tour de force. The girl cannot be tamed. Unbelievable. She taught me so much in 10 minutes on how to uh, promote things on Twitter and things, but she was so supportive of our project as well. It was, uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. What I just really can't get over that that was your first m- movie that you've done. And I think anybody who watches it is going to think the same because you've done an absolutely fantastic job on both of them. Thank you so much. Oh, brilliant. Nice well, ho- hopefully the uh, short films Damon's doing and this next thing I'm getting done will uh, match up to them. I, I, we're getting closer. We're getting we're learning and learning, you know, and that's all it is. As long as you keep learning, then it feels like you're going in the right direction. But, yeah. You know. I think my new the ones that I'm doing now, the scale certainly will be different, um, but hopefully the look will be the same. The guy, that, the person that I've got doing, who came and did the DOPing for me, um, he actually did the FX on the tour, then edited the package, did the FX on the package, and now he's DOPing these ones, um, and he's been absolutely sensational for me. He's, he's, he's a person called Guy Pearson, and I'll tell you what, he's the things that he knows about film, he's been. Yeah, he was. He went to film school a while ago, a long time ago. But he's he's been just doing stuff. And in the tour, you would be surprised at how many digital effects are in there that you just don't know. Absolutely, the amount of day for night we had to shoot in that yeah. film, and how he saved that film in so many ways. It was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a bit when we didn't realise that uh, when they're back at the back at the house and. You could just see the van that we were using in, in the side of a shop. Um, and we're like, oh, no, the van shouldn't be there because we're back at the house. It's later on. The van would have gone. And he went, oh, don't worry about it. I'll put a bush in front of it. God, isn't that amazing and, what you can do? Yeah. And you, you, it's seamless. You cannot tell. Um, to help with the lighting situation, he put little street lights out to, in the in the nighttime bits um, to just even the colouring out. He... He was having to get rid of things within the house, like signs, because um, you know it's 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 being set up to be uh, an attractive a, a venue for people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there was there was all these little senior things that he was having to do for it, and yeah, I, I think it's it's unfortunate. I think for some digital artists that do that, and nobody knows. Well, guys, definitely now when you have your next projects out, you'll have to send them on to me for review, and we'll get you back on the show again. I'm dying to see Absolutely. them now. I'm a massive fan already. Thank you very much, Rita. Well, guys, thanks so, so much for your time. And I look forward to having you on the show again. Well, thanks so much for having us. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, we'll keep you to that. We'll send you everything. And we'll harass you. The Crypt Interviews in association with Mayo Legend Point Castle Bar.